You guys know I'm a foodie. I'm always talking about some good plant-based recipes, cooking something up delicious, something that's titillating and sensuous to your palate. Shout out to Queen of Green. Her food looks delicious. I saw her actually um, from a YouTuber that I subscribed to, um, Sweet Potato Soul. She does vegan recipes and um, I was looking at her wedding, she had a wedding on YouTube and I thought it was so cool and so creative um, that they had it catered and she went on this kind of like quest with her fiance to find some of the most like delicious wedding food because some of their relatives were not plant-based and she um, decided after going on a taste test all around LA that Queen of Green was the, the one, like her food was just, you know, the most succulent and uh, delectable. And I just thought that that was so cool. And once I saw that, I subscribed to her. So anyways, you know that I'm a foodie. And one thing that's so cool about food is the variety. I was fearful when I went plant-based that I was gonna miss out on the fun. You know, I used to love um, just the, the variety of food. I used to love oysters and salmon and all different types of food. And I was like, I'm not gonna be able to have this variety, but when you get into flavors and you and you think about fruit and vegetables, there's just so many things that you can do, even if it's plant-based, different types of cuisine, international, right? So we're talking about life right now, and I'm equating it to one of my favorite topics, food, of course, and this idea of life being a buffet, right? It's a delectable buffet. Mm. But you can't have everything because the issue is, well, you can, you can have everything, but the thing is some things that you are gonna choose in life may not be good for you. Some of the things on that buffet may leave you lethargic. It may leave you sluggish. It may give you some love handles. It's not gonna be to your benefit in the long run, right? Now, because our creator gave us the free will of choice, you could choose those things. You know, I mean, it's up to you. You can eat french fries and hamburgers every single day. No one's stopping you. You could go to McDonald's and get the dollar menu every single day. No one's stopping you. That is free will. But should you? Right? And so I say this to say that I don't think that these people really understand that I don't take into consideration anything that they say and anything that they want. Well, who? Who, Kenza? Who are you talking about? Who's they? You keep saying they. Who do you mean? Are you talking about men? No. Not necessarily. Are you talking about white people? No, not necessarily. When I say they, I'm talking about the soulless. That's who I mean when I say they. Look, I don't care how much fame, popularity, money, influence you've obtained, to me, it would never be worth it for the price of my soul. That's a non-negotiable. What is a soul, Kenza? What, what does that mean? Soul is how you feel when you connect with your creator. Soul is the breath of life, the chi, the life force that you feel inside of you, that passion. That is your soul, what thrives you, what makes you excited. That is your soul. Soul is... When you make love to your husband, to your divine counterpart, and you feel that connection that is just so powerful and overtaking, like, oh my goodness, that is your soul. And so for me, I'm like, I don't want it if it's not soulful. Like, I don't want some, I don't want food if there's not love in it. I can, I can taste the soul in it. I don't want a man if he doesn't have the soul. Like, if he can't match my soul, if he can't ignite this vibrant, beautiful soul of mine, that's like making love to a corpse. Soul is everything. Soul is Bob Marley music. Soul is Tracy Chapman music. Shout out to Tracy Chapman also. I mean, her, her music is just so relevant and so poignant all the time. And I'm gonna make this statement. 
I would rather die than be soulless. There is nothing worth the, worth the price of your soul. I would not want to exist without a soul. So I don't listen to the soulless because I don't seek their life. There's nothing appealing or alluring about having no soul to me. There, there's, there's nothing about it. I do not take their advice. I don't listen to their wisdom. I don't, I, nah. Because that's life, right? Life is about choice. So we have the choice to listen to who we choose to listen to. We have the choice to gravitate towards what we choose to gravitate towards. We have the choice to follow who we want to follow. And that includes spirituality. That includes religion also. 24 hours in a day, you can do what you want with your time. That is your choice. And I don't ever forget who made me. So I listen to the soulless and what they want for my life. Oh, okay, that's what you want. That doesn't matter. The, what, what the creator has ordained for me is what, what my life will turn out to be. My creator's decision trumps everything and trumps everyone. Yes, the same creator that you deny that actually created you. I can't bail you out of the decisions that you make. That's what being an adult is. People think, oh, my pursuit of music and my passion and things like that. Like, first of all, I, I need to let you know that adulting is not misery. <laughs> I don't know how, who told you that being an adult is being solemn and miserable and having a begrudging relationship with life, that that's being an adult. That being so serious about everything, that's being an adult. I don't know who, I don't know who told you that. You see, the, the things that you believe in, I don't believe in. And I'm cool with the fact that you believe in those things. Like, I'm cool with that. Like, rock on. Like, over there. Like, believe in the things that you believe in over there. That's fine, right? I don't even say as long as it brings you joy. I don't care what it brings you. I don't care if it brings you joy. I don't care if it brings you peace. I don't care if it brings you love, prosperity. I don't care. This is free will. The creator that I serve has mastered a plan of free will. It is amazing and beautiful that every person can choose the route that they want to go in life. It is awesome. That's why I don't tell people what to do. You do what you do with your life and your time and your mind and your energy and your creativity. You do what you do. You can choose to say, I don't rock with that. Or, I think that person's crazy. You can dismiss things, right? You can find value in things. That is your right. So you know damn sure I'm not letting you tell me what to do. <laughs> like what? You want me to do what? I, I'm tired. I'm, I'm sorry. Did you create me? Did you even carry me in your womb for nine months? I'm sorry, do you have a child on this earth? Because that was a choice. Like, I'm a whole mother out here. I have a child who's six foot one, bigger than me. I'm like, time out. Creator that I serve gave us all one life. Gave us the most beautiful thing of life, our soul. That's the, that's the commodity. Our soul is everything, right? Because in our understanding, from what I believe, the shaitan is not after your money. The shaitan is not after your, you know, the shaitan is after your soul. The shaitan may be after your mind, but your mind is really just a tool to get to your soul. So out of everything that's the most precious thing that you have, it's your soul. Why the fuck would I let somebody who's soulless tell me what to do? How to feel, where to live my life. You 
had the most precious commodity and you sold it. And I'm not here to judge you. I'm just saying, if that's the decision that you made, I, you don't have anything to tell me. Because that's a decision I would never even consider for my life, this beautiful soul. When I'm rocking to Bob Marley, I'm about to write a song today. When I'm rocking to Bob Marley, I'm like, this is the height of life. This is, when I'm creating my music, when I'm in prayer, when I'm in meditation and doing my yoga and dancing, I'm like, there's no bigger pleasure than this. I just want, I'm so grateful. Like, oh my gosh, this life that you gave me is so beautiful. It's amazing. It's wonderful. It's purposeful. It's passionate. I'm so full of self-love and gratitude to my creator for this soul and the soul music that I create. Alhamdulillah. So I'm like, anything that doesn't include that, I don't even want. It's like you're getting advice from somebody who's like not even in your field. Like, I'm like, okay, that's cool that you're like a finance person. And perhaps, you know, down the road, I might need you to be on my team. But like, that's not my lane. You know what I'm saying? Like, th this is my lane. Like, this art thing is my lane. Like, you're advising me and you're not even, you don't even do what I do. Right? And so I was talking to a buddy of mine yesterday. I was saying that, you know, this, this life, right? I got advice from a friend of mine that this life is blocking and receiving. He kind of equated it to like football. Like you've got to block and receive, right? And who are you blocking again? When I refer to them, I'm talking about the soulless. So I take this analogy of planting a garden. You're, you're growing something, you're developing something. The garden could be anything, the garden could be you. And you are, purchasing the tools necessary, the fertilizer that you need and the water and you're reading up on gardening and getting a green thumb and you're getting all that information on how to plant the garden and then you go out and you plant your garden, right? And you're starting to see the buds of your roses and your vegetation, the collard greens that you planted and all of the things that, that you wanted to, to manifest. <clears throat> and then you wake up in the morning and you're noticing all your roses have been cut down. The roots of your rutabaga have been uprooted. And this is continuous. Every time you're planting that there, there's something or someone that's coming in and taking all of your vegetation and destroying your garden. Are you going to say, no, it's just love and light. No, we're just love and light. We're just love and light. No. You need to be love and light simultaneously with a killer of the person that's killing your garden. It's not all love and light all day. It's balance. It's blocking and receiving. Right? It's being um, in, in, in fruition. But also, if somebody comes to the things that you have built... In this life, if somebody comes to try to knock that down, nah, they gotta get taken out. They got, they've got to get taken out. And so it's not just a matter of just being a spiritual being and just being all love and light all day. No, that's not it. And for me, the way that I see this whole thing is I, I deal with the good, I deal with the bad, I deal with all, all of that in between. I don't allow people to take responsibility of my hardships, of my adversities, of the burdens that I've had in this life. I don't. I say that's on me. An imam told me that Allah will never give you a burden that you cannot bear, but you can give yourself one. But if you can give yourself a burden that you can't bear, you can also give yourself a life that you want to live. The power is in within, within your hands. And so what I don't do is I do not develop philosophies, principles, or ideologies that don't adhere to my greater good. Number one priority in this life for me is to have the ultimate glory in favor of the most high. Anything outside of that is secondary. 
that's the ultimate win, right? So I stay focused on the game. What is the game for me? The game is to be in favor and of service to the most high, period. If that is not, if you have everything else, but you've lost at that, you've lost the game. And that's my belief system. You don't have to agree with that, right? Because we go back to free will. But that's the belief system that I adhere to. If you have lost your soul, if you have lost the favor of the most high, you have lost the game. Now, when I read Quran and it says that Allah, our creator, wants nothing but the best for us. I'm like, hmm, like wants us to have a great life. I'm like, well, what's stopping us from having a great life? What's stopping us from feeling alive and invigorated and pur purposeful and passionate and excited and happy and joyful every single day? I don't let thoughts of the shaitan enter my mind or the priorities of the shaitan enter my mind. It's like, sisters, I know that you can, you can feel this, right? I was talking to a pastor back in the day. I was actually really good friends with this real cool down to earth pastor. And it was kind of funny because he was like <laughs> the things that he would say, and he was a holy man. He would be like, Jesus gave us wine so we could party, you know? Um, but he was, he was a friend of mine. And I remember him saying he was dating a black woman and how put off he was when they went to the beach and she wouldn't get in the water because she had just gotten her hair done. And to me, that, that, was, that was profound, you know, like, you're letting these foolish things, you know what I'm saying? Like your edges and your roots and how you look and makeup and like lashes and things like that. Like this, it's kind of like a burden sometimes to just like this upkeep of what it means to be like looking kempt or whatever, or looking good or looking like you have it or whatever, like prevent you from having the fun and the joy of life. And that's one thing that I learned in Cali. I'm like, let me put some braids in my hair. You know what I'm saying? And not care about my hair getting wet so I can jump on a surfboard and head to the beach. Like if I, if I am wearing lashes and I get in the ocean, those things are going to swim away. That's fun to me. I'm in the ocean. I'm on the surfboard. I'm chilling. I'm at the beach having a great time. I'm not going to let this whole glamorous thing prevent me from having fun. And I can equate that to life. All of these extra things are burdens to the to real fun, the pleasure of life, simplicity and minimalism, the idea of going to a garden and just eating a delicious fruit, the idea of taking your socks off, your shoes off, and not worry about if they're red bottoms and not worry about, you know, the sand getting, like, just really, like, diving into life and really enjoying it. Like, this is what Allah gave us, this beautiful world. And we're focused on the wrong things and can't even appreciate this beautiful, beautiful, divine life, divine world that our creator gave us. I have no room in my mind for anything outside of that. Everything else is irrelevant to me. Everything else is small stuff to me. I know what I'm here to do. I'll be 50 years old still doing music. I'll be 60 years old still doing music. I know what I'm here to do. It's your system that has put value on certain things and not on other things. And I'm saying that certain people, certain people experience a greater sense of depression and a greater sense of misery for not being in, acc in accordance with the most high and in accordance with an organic life. Because you're wired to be in accordance with an organic life. So the consequences of not being in tune with that life is going to be greater than somebody who is not really in accordance or in adherence to an, or an organic life. I'm not letting anybody bully me or put pressure on me as far as the things that I need to, to do because I, I am also an observer of the results that your life has brought you. And, I, and according to my belief system, <clears throat> money is fine, money is great, but if you're not joyful, if you're not at peace, that's a life that I don't want. So you don't have the formula for me. You don't have the formula because the results of your life have not equated to a life that I desire. 
being cooped up in an office and nine to five is not uh, adulting to me. Being unhappy with the decisions that you've made is not adulting to me. That is being an adherence to a society that does not want you to be free. That does not want you to live your purpose. That's what that is. But that's not being an adult. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in order to enter the paradise, you have to be childlike. What does that mean? What does that mean to be childlike? That's not meaning immaturity. That means childlike. What are children like? Children are open-minded. They're open-hearted. They're free of the isms and the schisms. Children don't care about their hair being done. Children don't care about money. Children will play with anybody. You get an Asian child with an Indian child, you know, with, with the African child, with the European child. They're playing together. It's fun time for the kids. That's it. Children are innocent. Children are trusting. Children are loving. In order to enter the paradise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says you need to be childlike. That is my belief system. That doesn't have to be your belief system, but that is my belief system. So all of these things that you, that you are, are trying to enforce on me, it doesn't equate to me. It, 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 it doesn't translate to me because it's not in accordance with the way that I believe. My belief system is not shakable. It's concrete. It's not penetrable. It has brought me great joy, extreme peace. That's all for now.